Moskovitz, the co-founder of Facebook, left more than a decade ago to found Asana, and Asana recently came public about a year ago. Its stock has been under huge selling pressure, down more than 70% from its 52-week high, and Dustin Moskovitz has been aggressively buying his stock in response. But what does Asana do, and how does it score on our investing checklists? We're going to run it through to find out. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thank you to Stockcard for sponsoring today's video. Brian, what is your current working knowledge of Asana? So I do know some things about Asana. I know that it has a collaboration tool. Um, I haven't looked at many of their statistics recently. I know they spend a lot to get customers, but the thing that sticks out above everything else is that Dustin Moskovitz has been buying up shares of this company so aggressively. At some points, I've asked myself, is he just going to buy this whole thing up and take it private again? Because um, this is one of those very rare circumstances where because of all the money that he made through Facebook, I think that Dustin Moskovitz's net worth, now think about this for a second, I believe his net worth is worth more than the total market capitalization of the company that he runs, Asana. Yeah. He could, in theory, buy out his entire company and run it for um, for himself. So I don't know if he was in a position to do that when he founded it. I don't know why he has outside investors in the first place. Maybe it's to provide liquidity to his employees. Maybe that's an important part of being public. Maybe it's for maybe it's because they want to uh, raise their profile in the business community. For example, would we be talking about them if they weren't right. public? But what I know about this company is that he got the idea for this when he was working at Facebook. And what he found is he was spending the majority of his day just getting updates on projects. And he was spending a huge amount of his time working about work. He wasn't actually doing the work. He was just doing work to like update uh, himself. So he created this collaboration tool, which makes that easy. Well, and it's, you know, it's like some of our favorite products that we've, we've talked about. So like Shopify, Toby Lukey never set out to found an e-commerce platform. He mm -hmm. wanted to sell snowboards. Right. There was no e-commerce platform that could help him do that. So he just created one for himself and that ended up being Shopify. It's the same thing. Dustin Moskovitz is just trying to help Facebook to grease its wheels, to make it work and run. And so he creates something and then that something ends up being what he leaves to go, to go proliferate. So uh, it, I love when products are born out of necessity like that. Yep. And if you are new to this uh, series, Brian and I are going to research Asana stock from scratch. We are going to be digging into SEC filings, looking through investor presentations, filling out our investing checklist as we go in an effort to answer the question, do we think that in, uh, Asana is an investable idea in its current form? So let's uh, let's get going. So we're going to start with uh, a stock card, uh, which is the sponsor of today's video. The ticker is ASAN. Looks like they have a class A uh, stock. Uh, this is a Asana's, or I'm sorry, Stock Card has done, uh, they, they've got a facelift. So we've got some new things that we can look at here. Right. So this is a company with strong growth, struggling financials. It's overvalued, doesn't pay a dividend, and it's been a poor recent performer. So the only thing that's saving this company is strong growth potential. This is the textbook case of example the market hates right now, right? It was it was uh, the darling in 2020, 2021. Now the market hates these kind of stocks. But let's see, it came public about $30 per share, 29 in tw September of 2020, hit 136 um, so less than a year later. So what's down that? Down 80% about? Yeah. And now it's 24. So it's 14% below its all time high. So tough holding. No, 14% below IPO price. About below its IPO price. Correct. Um, so Asana helps team orchestrate their work from small projects to strategic initiatives. Headquartered in San Francisco, Asana has more than 93,000 paying companies and millions of free organizations across 190 countries. Con global companies like Accenture, Estee Lauder, Japan Airlines, Sky, and Weissman rely on Asana to manage everything. So this is uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, $5 billion market cap. 467 million in revenue. So uh, 11 times earnings, 11 times sales. Uh, sorry, sales. Yes. Uh, gross profit of 420 Holy million. Moly. So but look at that. that means their gross profit margin is about 90%. Very strong high? gross profit margin. And they're trading at about 
11, 11 and a half times um, gross profit. Um, they have EBITDA of negative 352 million. So that is a massive number compared to their gross profit. So their expenses must be bananas. Yep. Uh, cash on hand of 148 million. Please tell me that's wrong because that does not compute. If if memory serves, there was a $350 million cash infusion probably since the last report. Because like I said, the main thing that I know about this is that Dustin Moskovitz has been buying hand over foot. And I think his infusion was a secondary offering to himself. Oh, okay. That's, that's good to know. Um, this is going to be a company with great revenue, great gross margins, um, and I have a feeling everything else financially we're not going to like, except yeah. for maybe the balance sheet. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's 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 check that out. So we're going to go Asana Investor Relations. I'm going to click over to Asana. Uh, okay, so we have the most recent quarter, uh, prepared remarks, supplemental information, uh, with a founder's letter. Nice to have that right there. Oh, a $350 million private placement. Yeah, that's the one that I heard about. Uh, they have a founding story, work graph, data model, the, the pyramid of clarity. Um, that's nice that they have links to the the um, founders letter right there. Yeah. So let's see. Do they have presentations? Featured hey, presentations. Oh, nice. Thank you for making it easy, Asana. Is that the right size? Yeah, that looks good. We love presentations. Yes, we do. Make it easy. Okay. Overview of last quarter, 540 million in annualized revenue run rate. So the market cap was, was it 4.5? 4.8. More. So nine times ARR. Right. 51% revenue growth, 64% revenue growth of customers spend at least $5,000. So yet another software company that's trying to swim upstream, I'd imagine. Right. 145% dollar-based net revenue retention rate from customers that are spending 100K. Customer oh, growth. Wait, let's just, let's unpack that for a second. So their big customers are increasing their spend by 45%. Yep. So I, I, I imagine that this is one of those companies that's going to be very long tail. And by that, what I mean is there might be a few big customers that account for a huge share of the company's revenue, maybe not to the point where well, they said that they had ninety thousand customers in the description, right? So, so a, a small percentage of overall customers are a huge percent of the revenue. Ninety percent gross margins, best places to work. One hundred five percent customer growth of one hundred k customers. So yeah, they are really pushing upstream to the larger customers as fast as they can. Okay, teams are facing an impact graph, distributed work, effort and impact. I see what they mean. So more work about work, less work about your mission. Oh yeah. When you work remote. Right. And so they're saying you don't get to work on your mission, uh, spreading financial wellness, whatever their mission is. You're just trying to organize meetings and, and emails and all the things that don't really matter. Right. So you're working just harder than ever, but your, your, your productivity is, is flattening. Mm-hmm. Uh, forty-two percent experience bin burnout and imposter syndrome. Okay, we spend too much time on busy work, strategic work, work about work, unnecessary meetings, email messaging, duplicated work. Fifty-eight percent. So half the time you're working, it's unnecessary. Exactly. As someone that was in corporate America for a little bit, that's not all that far off. Um, mm -hmm. The solution coordination. Who is doing what, by when, and why? Content files, communication, email, and uh, messaging. So, Brian, we, me, and you use a communications tool called uh, um, uh, Notion to go back mm -hmm. and forth, and it definitely helps to stay on the same page about what we're doing. Well, absolutely, and it means that I can work on something without having to contact you every thirty seconds. Right, and you can do the same thing with me, and I can get the most recent up to date and everything like that on it. Um, uh, and and uh, I know I know that um, what's it, is it Trello? Yeah. Trello is another company like this. I think this is one of the company's main competitors. Existing tools do not meet teams' coordination needs. Spreadsheets don't scale. I buy that. Yep. Vertical solutions are not flexible, and legacy project management has poor adoption. 
files and emailing. Asana solves the problem of team coordination. Uh, Organization-wide clarity. So cross-team work, visibility by our work graph model. What, one thing I'll say on that, just real quick on that previous uh, slide, was that our friend Tim Byers at uh, The Motley Fool, he's told me before that one of the things that makes Asana different is the fact that it works well between departments. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, things that might work really well for content creators and something else for operations and something else for security. And his point was, is one thing that Asana is good at is you can talk between those departments. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I could see a, a tool like this getting siloed in an organization. It's mm -hmm. not helpful if it's only used by the IT people or the sales people, but if you're a manager or CEO, you want to make sure that you can see details at any level you want. Right. Okay. The business of Asana. IDC, I think that's Interactive Data Corp. Uh, research demonstrates that substantial impact that Asana has had an organization's ability to focus on higher value work and customer delivery. As a result, participants reported higher employee productivity, more effective and time on work, ultimately ensuring higher customer satisfaction. 225% return on investment, 33% time spent less time on emails, 42% faster execution, saving two hours per week per daily user, and 72% higher employee satisfaction. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's like when I was a teacher, no one gets into teaching to grade and communicate with parents, but that's what drives people out of teaching. And so if you can eliminate that and just focus on teaching children or whatever it is that you're doing, that's what Asana is trying to do is just <laughs> get back to the reason you got into the field you're in. Uh, the most comprehensive vision in work management, chapter one, plan of record, pyramid of clarity, navigate the organization. Okay, so alignment, cross-coordination, visibility, security, one platform for every team, and they're partnered with Microsoft, Google, Dropbox, Okta, Everyone. all the companies. So, okay. Good. Lots of integrations. Integrations are good. Global footprint. Yeah, wow, they really are everywhere. Robust ESG disclosures aligned with best practices. Cool. Customers and go to market. 131,000 paying customers, so 40,000 more than previously. Uh, 200 countries and territories. 40% of revenue outside the U.S. already. Wow. Not bad. Hybrid product-led, hybrid product-led and sales-led business model. Product-led, so sm small teams and sales-led are key workflows expanding. Do you think so, that means it's a freemium model? I think I think this is um, this is self service. If you're yeah. a small team, and they also have a sales force, probably an inside sales force, maybe even an outside sales force to, for the big clients. Got it. My guess. Large underserved market with 1.1 billion adjustable worker, top down billion dollars, bottoms up. 2.5 million paid users is five percent user penetration. That does not look like five percent to me. Oh. <laughs> of under 5% user penetration. That's of the existing users. Right. I have a feeling that's not going to go much higher though. It's hard to say. You know what I mean? I view that like Wix. Wix has millions of, of websites that they do for free, but only like they monitor, they, people that pay are like one, two or 3%. Yeah. That's not going to go to 20%. No. Yeah. Levers for growth. Add more customers, expand organization-wide case studies, innovate, workflows and build a high value brand. Okay. Financials, subscription revenue model, high revenue growth and strong gross margins, great gross margins, strong land and expand path, path to profitability. All right. Products drive strong revenue growth. 59% and that accelerated in fiscal year 2022. So is that? So fiscal year 2022 means 2021 basically, right. I believe. So this is going to be a tough comparison period. Yes. And if you look, so 67 in the three, no, in the two quarters since it's been 57 and 51, which is awesome, but not 67%. Right. Declining, declining revenue growth rates. So Wall Street does not like that. While DB dollar-based net revenue retention increased with large, with, with largest deployments, 120% overall, 130% with, 5k 145 with 50k so i mean the, that to me this is the biggest 
the most important slide I've seen so far because what it's showing is two things. One is some level of optionality. We don't know if that's from adding new users or new tools, but some level of optionality. But the other thing, Brian, is that switching a small team from one collaboration tool to the other, that's not that hard. You and I switched from using Google Sheets to Notion and like it took you like a week to convince me to go on to Notion, right? That was it. And mostly it was just me being too lazy to go over and start using Notion. If you have a 10,000 person organization and you're going from Google Sheets to Notion, the switching costs are phenomenally high. Mm -hmm. So this is really important because the switching costs are much higher in that red dot than they are in that green dot. There's definitely probably, there's definitely higher churn here too. Yes. Right? Churn, churn is higher here. It's just it's just harder to service Harder and more volatile to serve small and medium-sized businesses. It's easier to land to service larger but fewer customers. Of course, that comes with its own risks and right. challenges. But this is a trend we've seen across lots of software companies. Mm -hmm. They are intentionally swimming upstream to the bigger, more stable customers. Yep. But uh, Asana is clearly doing a great job there. Total paying customers is up 22%. Customer spending was up 41%. Cust oh, customer spending 5K. 5K. So roughly 12% of them, 13% are spending more. Customer spending 100K was up doubled. I mean, this is a pretty, to me, this looks like it's probably a relatively affordable tool because mm -hmm. five, 5K is just 400 bucks a month for a company. That's not that much. Right. Uh, increasing traction in our larger recurring revenue contracts. Percent of total revenue by contract size. 5K plus is 72% of the total. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Durable best in class gross margins. That's bananas. Yeah, that's very, very strong. Why us? Our mission? Um, you haven't told us the mission yet. Yeah, I would assume that that would be the bottom of the period, pyramid. <laughs> um, enormous greenfield opportunity. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Critical differentiated offerings with strong technical moat, the work graph. Growing fast at scale, proven business model, a strong, strongest vision, culture, and team. Okay. Appendix. Oh, great. Revenue growth by geography. International was 39%, but currency was currency was a 400 basis point headwind there. It's a pretty big headwind. Still strong. Okay. Gross margins. Um, Non-gap adjustments were- It looks to me like uh, they're useful. not- they're not giving away much stock-based compensation in terms of gross profit. Gross profit. Right, uh, right. Let's I wait till we get to the operating, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice letter. Nice nice job there. Um, that's this is the, the letter. Marks. A uh, letter from our co-founders. Asana is, um, everything we do is in service of our mission. To help humanity thrive by enabling the world's teams to work together effortlessly. It's a little long. It is a little long. But I like it. To enable teams to work together effortlessly would be better. Or even to help humanity thrive. I mean, yeah, like that, they that have one. Too. It's up front. When we work together, we do great things. All important progress in the world requires teams of people. It's impeded. Uh, we're going to make that better, building a system. We were inspired after seeing broad adoption in park at the internal work management tool we built while at Facebook. We left Facebook and created Asana to address our own pain. We love working on big ideas, but we loathe the annoying busy work required by their execution. <laughs> I'm just laughing because uh, amongst our small team, I feel like when it comes to anything beyond content creation, that is annoying busy work. And so I'm just like, don't tell me about it. I don't even care. <laughs> That's because coordinating across... Teams is chaotic. The problem's only worse as organizations take on greater challenges. Yep. Uh, I buy all that. Creating products customers love. Um, I mean, I feel like I can skim this because I kind of know the gist of it. Mm -hmm. um, improvement. Our work graph, like the social graph, the two of us helped create at Facebook. The work graph is a flexible data model of people, tasks, goals, projects, portfolios, conversations, files, and relationships. Powering Asana, the work wrap enables each Asana user to see information in the format that makes the most sense for them. Our proprietary Luna 2, hopefully nothing to do with the cryptocurrency, 
application sure. framework, which we believe to be ahead of the state of the art in enabling the rapid deployment of high performance applications with complex user interfaces. This enables us to deliver sophisticated new functionality to customers with unusual speed, even when concurrently scaling our infrastructure to support quickly growing number of customers worldwide. Okay. Our mindful technology approach to design that respects user attention and enables focus. I want to say something about that real quick. If I'm okay. not wrong, the person at the bottom of this letter will also be someone by the name of Justin Rosenstein. Have you seen the social dilemma? No. Okay, so the social dilemma is all about how social media is kind of hijacking our brains. Okay. Um, and Justin Rosenstein, who is on the team that created the like button, shows up over and over and over and over again in the in the movie. So I I, I believe that they mean that when they talk about mindful technology um, and not creating something that is built to just keep you engaged all the time. Okay. Um, building fast growth at Asana, revenue is not an end in itself. It is the rocket fuel for achieving our mission. Enabling our world's team to work together effortlessly is a very big mission. So we've invested tremendous energy in building and optimizing an unusually powerful engine for revenue and growth. Traditional business software is sold top down. A new generation, a new generation of vendors has taken a bottoms up approach, allowing small teams within large organizations to try and purchase business software online. We take an unusual hybrid approach. Our optimized self-service engine allows us to land rapidly in teams all over the world, often via word of mouth, and our direct sales team can expand that bottom-up usage into company-wide deployment much faster through organic growth. We get the both, best of both worlds. We get more of than the sum of their parts. We close deals much more quickly by showing buyers the success and happy assigned users that already exist without needing to cold call and wine and dine CIOs. <laughs> Our product and go-to-market strategy also give us the best of both worlds. While some vendors choose to focus on an individual target market and others create broad generic solutions, we offer a horizontal platform that can be used by any team in any industry anywhere, as well as templates, solutions, and in-house experts that are tailored to the needs of the specific segments and geographies where they have the best product market fit. So basically, we built a great tool and we get surprised as people find new ways to use it. That's optionality. Yeah. And it's like accident. It's like a built-in serendipity. Exactly. It's optionality that you don't even need to plan for. Right. You just build the tools and then get surprised by how they're used. And yeah, uh, pursuing our long term vision. We've had a long term vision to enable teams to work seem together effortlessly. Uh, we have partnered closely with customers, people most effective, fulfilled when they're happy. Uh, okay. The first phase of our vision was to deliver clarity up, down, and across organizations. Okay. The second phase is the benefit of the work graph by marrying human intelligence with computer intelligence. When details about data about work are linked and to and traced in our database, Asana can serve as a powerful integration tool to service individuals, teams, and organizations from optimizing how work should be done to predicting bottlenecks and suggesting ways to alleviate them. The I second phase of our roadmap envisions Asana as a navigation system for organizations. Okay. I can see we that intend to offer money saver. several benefits for team members. They do their best. Uh, the best products for teams, okay, for organizations, improvement, yep, leadership and governance for benefits. Dustin and JR. Dustin J Rosenstein. There you go. Um, okay. So let's go to the um, most recent results. And I know that we saw these in earnest, but let's just take a look at some of the um, further. So I, mean, I really want to look at the income statement more than Yes. Anything. So operating loss was 111 million. So the operating loss was just 82% of revenue oh down God. from 67% of revenue. The worst. Non-gap operating loss of 38.6 million. So Let, non -gap let's, up, let's put that in perspective. For every dollar that a customer spends, Asana is losing 82 cents. Yes. Who? Uh, and the net, the net numbers are just as bad, but a whole bunch of that, whole bunch of that stock-based comp cash flows and operating activities was negative 42 million. Free cash flow was negative 42 million. So the free cash flow negative, not nearly as much as their EBITDA, but still. So is this for the quarter for the second quarter of fiscal 22? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Free cash flow was negative 42 million for the quarter. Why was it so high? Oh, we'll check that out. Uh, we saw a lot of these uh, numbers. Their best place to work. 
for next quarter, revenue growth of 38 to 39%. Hats off for telling us the percentage. Yes, thank you. Um, correct operating loss is half half of revenues, so better on a percentage basis, but still pretty ugly. All right, let's get into the income statement. Okay, so we're looking at 2022 versus 2021. So gross margin still awesome. Their sales and marketing, I mean, research and development is a pretty big expense. Sales and marketing is the biggest, not surprising. I mean, it's almost a hundred percent of gross profit. Yeah. GNA is another 46. Um, let's see the share count. Ooh. Oh. So what 21, is 21, 21 million new shares. That's, 12% dilution? 12% dilution. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah. Especially if, I don't know if that includes a, so I, I know that you don't look at dilution that much, but well, hold on. Is go, that up even... little, go up a little bit because uh, I want to see. So, so what were the, there? Let's just put this in perspective. Operating losses were 111 million. If we add back in 48 million, they're still losing 63 million, about yeah. 64 million in the quarter. In, in the quarter. So even if you're like, well, stock based compensation doesn't matter, they're still losing hand over fist on a cash basis. Yeah. So let's take a look at their cash balance. So it was down to 148. So 240 million yep. in cash. Accounts receivable is flat property plant equipment operating lease right of use assets you can ignore that uh liabilities deferred revenue is their biggest liability what's deferred revenue deferred revenue is money that they've already collected but they just haven't provided that software for that month yet it is the best kind of liability you can have the best kind of liability you can have is deferred revenue so that is not scary at all um, and then the other one is operating lease liabilities. Is that scary? Not at all. That is just rent. And if you look up, it pretty much, not totally, but it cancels out the operating lease right of use assets. It just right. means it's rent that we've agreed to pay in the future. So let me just say, what I see here is no long-term debt to speak of. I, that $32 million, that, that's not much. Yep. And about 600 million in cash because I'm adding in because I know that we're going to add in 350 million dollars for for the private quote unquote oh, yeah, private okay. placement. So about 590 million dollars in cash, zero debt. But if we annualize their burn rate, they're losing about 160 million dollars per year. Now I don't know if we can annualize that or not, but the point is is that only gives them about three years worth of cash. So let's look at this. So the 350 million of a private placement um, has sold 350 miles of shares to Dustin Moskovitz in a private transaction. The 19,000 shares of class A was a term based close of $18 and 16 cents. Wow. So that was good for him for getting at that low, but th is this new shares? It's gotta be. Seems like it. So add in another, 10% oh dilution goodness. on top of the 12% dilution we just we just experienced. That yeah. So there's there's going to be there was what 190 now there's going to be 211 209 yeah. million shares. Last year there was 170 million shares. This upcoming quarter there's going to be at least 210 210. <sighs> and so in just two quarters that's a 24% dilution and it's going to be higher than that. Right. In other words, you, take 24% growth and just subtract it. Yeah. And just, now, give, just give it away to the employees. On the flip side, on the flip side, silver lining here, those huge losses are getting cut down into smaller pieces too. Yeah. I, I, I have a feeling this company has full control over its, its losses, but it does stink that Dustin Moskovitz was able to essentially take advantage of the the lower share price. So he bought it 1816, so that would be roughly a 4 billion dollar valuation. Mm -hmm. So he just he just purchased personally added 10% to his ownership stake in Asana. Yeah, personally. Now, you just said something that I think we should explain. You just said I feel like they have complete control over their expenses. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, the these numbers here 
uh, the uh, are are the reason they're they're unprofitable, right? Research and development, sales and marketing, general administration, management has full control over how much it spends uh, on these things. Not full control, but plenty of control. So this is is by design. They're losing this much money by design. So they have one hundred twenty million dollars in quarterly gross profit to spend, and they're saying to heck with that. We're gonna double that. <laughs> so you're saying they don't care at this point that they're spending that much money. And maybe it's because, look, Dustin's got billions of dollars sitting in the bank. He can bail us out at any point in time. Right, right. All it right. also might be, and that, that, this is something I go back and forth with, because on the one hand, I'm sure he's driven to, but to succeed. On the other hand, he's so rich. Does he care about becoming even more rich on top of that? Right. Or is this a... Is this a passion project? And this is him making all of his friends and coworkers rich too. Yeah. Or is he making sure that all the benefit goes to humanity, which is not a bad thing for you and yeah. I, but, but, but if you're a shareholder, it might not be such a great thing. Uh, correct. Uh, correct. Either way, that is some um, ugly, ugly, ugly dilution. Ugly, ugly, ugly dilution. I only subtract five points for that, but that has a feeling it's going to be even more. But look, look, look. Okay, the six month period, um, eighty four million in negative free cash flow. So that was actually pretty accurate. Why is it so big? Net cash in invest uh, in in investing activities, mm. and then financing activities. So where's operating, investing, financing, operating? Oh, here, here's operating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other way. Um, well, their purchases of property, plant, and equipment went down significantly. I bet they built their headquarters out. Possibly. Um, possibly. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Um, do you want to take a look at the 10K? Um, I mean, I can just yeah. tell you, based on that, based on that single purchase, just on that, Dustin Moskovitz owns personally at least 10% of the company. Well, why don't you click on that? So let's show let's show folks that are watching right now because usually you and I just go to the proxy statement. And for those yep. that don't understand what a proxy statement is, every year a company needs to say, here's how much of our shares are owned by different people. But things change in a year, usually not by very much. So Brian and I are comfortable using the proxy statement. However, yep. things are changing pretty significantly here. So what did that say? What was his overall ownership for right now i think it should be in there so this is a form four a form four is when somebody makes a uh, transaction a lot of times these are minor transactions so there's a whole bunch of them but in this case on september 7th so last week um he bought let's see one, two, 19 three, million shares 19 million shares at 1816 that's what we saw the amount of securities beneficially owned following the transaction is that so how many digits are in there well and then he indirectly owns another four million so he doubled his personal stake so he owns 39 million plus four uh, directly 39 right. million out of 210 well and but right. i'm adding those four in as well he owns probably through it yeah trust what's, or what's the like footnote that. so here. 43 million now does it say that these this was a secondary offering uh it said it was a private placement so that means they're increasing the share count, right? So, yeah. So if you add this, which he owns directly to this, one, two, three, about 43 that, million. That's right? 4 million, not 41. Right, right. No, it's, but it's four plus 39. Yeah, 43. 43 divided by at least 210. So he owns 20% of the company. 20%. Um, 4 million of which are in a, are in a trust. And so. Like. 20% of, we said a $4.8 billion company, right? So that's billion. one, that's $1 billion, a billion dollars. And if I look up, I'm just going to do this while you're, uh, Dustin Moskovitz's net worth. Yeah, you can do that. It sits at $9.3 billion now. So this is, this is 11% of his net worth. Yeah. So and who knows if that 9.3 is accurate as of today, but the point is, is that the CEO is worth as much as nine times the value of the company. No, no it's worth twice. At least twice as much the value of the company that he's running. Yeah. I have a feeling he doesn't want to go. Well, who knows what he's found. I, I should just not say anything. Okay. We're going to go to 10 K. We're going to do a couple little bit of searches. We understand the gist of the business. 
and we understand the why that it exists. So we're going to go down to, oops, did I go too far? Sorry if I'm- What are you looking for? I clicked on business and it didn't go. Business, there it goes, okay. Our mission is to help humanity thrive by enabling the world's teams to work together effortlessly. That's the same, okay? We saw the history, too much time spent on work, how Asana helps, one thing, the work graph. Our business model is going for customers, so bottoms up, we have a culture. We believe that our company culture enables us to achieve our mission. Teams must be coordinated. Communication hurts or communication overload hurts productivity. Buy it. 120 emails per day, 70% of which are opened within six seconds. What? You, can you tell you and I haven't been in an office in about a decade? Well, I get a lot of emails per day too, but I don't open them within six seconds. Well, you like what you do. Yeah. Team spends more time coordinating, answering emails. We do spend a lot of time answering emails. Team needs to be more effective. Clarity drives engagement. Our solution is, yep, we saw, we saw, uh, we saw our culture. That's good. Okay. Mission, clarity, rejects, reject false trade-offs. Interesting one. Mindfulness, hard to do great things fast. Be yourself. Give and take responsibly. That's a lot of value. Look at this. Our glass door score. We have a 4.8 out of 5, 100% CEO approval rating, 98% recommend to a friend. Let's see what it's it's like. Uh, we're going to check where it is right now. But good for you. Back places to work, 21, 2018, 2017 reviews. Wow. 98% CEO approved rating, 4.9 stars out of five. That's what happens when you pay them gobs amount of money in, in, in uh, stock raise compensation. But you don't get these numbers with just paying them well. No, you don't. The least liked thing is compensation. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I mean, hey, if nothing else, if you're watching this, you might not want to invest in asana but you should probably submit an application this would be a great company to work for and get rich off of the extreme dilution um i bet i bet they have a really really generous uh options uh package really 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 generous um okay where was we before okay features of the platform work history oh, tasks projects platforms goals Inbox, workload, yep, rules, integrations. Asana platform integrates with 230 parties, including Microsoft apps, Google apps, Splunk, ServiceNow, Okta, Azure, marketing apps. Sigma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Communication apps, file sharing, sales, development, reporting, connector app. Great. Tons of, tons of uh, uh, connections. Um, do you think, let me ask you this. I don't think that this company has a, network effect, but I could see them having an internal network effect. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have an in, they have an in-house network effect. So Explain which, the difference. Which it seems like they are using in some in-house network effect means um, I run, uh, I work at GE and one tiny department at GE starts using this. It goes very well. And so management sees this and says, we're going to use it for everyone. Now, your department will not benefit from Asana unless it's using Asana within GE. And that's not unimportant because those big customers are such a huge part of the company's revenue. That's probably why their net dollar retention rate is so high because mm -hmm. they started in GE healthcare and now they're GE everything. Um, so, I, I mean, I would give them a little bit of credit there. The only reason I would give them some credit because in general, the network effect is each user makes the service more valuable. And that works for things like um, Facebook. Every every one of my friends that gets on makes it more valuable to me. But this is internal, but it's clearly part of their strategy too. So it's not nothing. Yeah. I would say that this is a network effect that increases switching costs, nothing more. All right. Um, direct sales, marketing. Yeah, we believe in those. Okay. I think I get the gist of it. Um, do you want to do a search for concentration? Yeah, for concentration. I doubt there's any uh, customer. There were no customers that accounted for more than 10% of revenue. The company had no, okay. 
Uh, there was a customer that had 13% of accounts receivable in 2021, but I not- I wonder if that was Facebook. Not in 2022. I wonder if it was Facebook. It would make oh. sense. You know, Harlan asked a good question I just want to hit on. He says, you had a word like litigation in your find uh, search bar. Yep. Any other words that you commonly look for? I mean- Retent I also uh, Retention, churn, uh, expansion- Litigation, yeah, just a couple okay. like that. There we go. Retention, churn, expansion. Good ones to put in there. I always do beneficial too. Beneficial. So that when we do, um, ownership. Beneficial ownership is the, the word I look for. All right. Let's check to see how the company has done against uh, Wall Street's expectations. And then I think I'm ready. Unless there's I, anything else you think we're missing. No, I, I think I'm ready too. Um, and... Yeah. So this is expectations. This is what they delivered. So we lost less money consistently than we were than we had um, stated. Still and they are guiding. This year they're guiding for forty four percent revenue growth. Next year thirty percent uh, revenue growth. So I would say that the company's valuation is fair in this environment, uh, given that growth potential. Not screaming, amazing, but fair. Mm hmm. And we'll, we'll let's dive a little bit deeper into that uh, valuation after we give the scores. Oh, now, see, according to this, it's five point three billion. So those metrics are going to be even higher. OK, because we were working off of four point eight. So A.S.A.N. Uh, this is a twenty five dollar stock. Five, this is five billion. Weird. All right. Uh, yep. Is revenue recurring? Uh, yes. Is it profitable? No, is it free cash flow positive? No, has it beaten the market? No. And ASAN, today's date is September 14th, 2022. And financial resilience, yeah, great balance sheet, especially yep. post everything. Gross margin, very high, three out of three. Returns on capital is a zero. Free cash flow is a zero. Earnings per share is a zero. Moat, do they have a network effect or product ecosystem? I'm saying no. Do they have high switching costs? Yes. I'm going to give them 10 points um, for that because of the high dollar-based net memory retention rate. Do they have a durable cost advantage gained through scale distribution, physical location, and vertical duration? No. Do they have a strong premium brand name? I would say the brand's pretty good. I am three points for that. And the moat direction, they are clearly adding customers, features, all that kind of stuff. So I'll say five. So I'll give them an 18 out of 20 on and that, that brand is, is I think pretty generous by you because they're still spending so much on sales and marketing. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. I'll give it two. All right. Optionality. Do they have optionality within their industry? Yes. Outside. Hard to say. I'll give them a four on that. Four out of seven organic revenue growth. That's very high. Four out of four. Are they a top dog and first mover or an industry disruptor? So they are a, Five billion dollar market cap. I'm gonna guess that their biggest main competitor would be Atlassian. That would be my guess as well. And Atlassian is substantially bigger, substantially bigger, but um, hard to say who the top dog is. So I'll just give them. A they're, they're definitely not the top dog. Okay. Do they have operating leverage ahead? God, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't get much worse than this. Four out of four. Customer acquisition costs are um a zero yeah. <laughs> you are spending so growth. much money on sales and marketing as a potential gross profit it's huge customer dependence do you think this is a nice to have or a needs to have need to have it, you need to have i i think it is because he, here's the reason why i say that now they might pull back a little bit you know in terms of if they lay people off you've got fewer seats that you're having filled but they had 145% net dollar revenue retention yep. in the face of a recession and inflation. Okay. Um, is revenue recurring? All of it's recurring. Do they have pricing power? Sure. I'll give you Gotta a believe that they do. For that credit there. Uh, soul in the game. Yep. Four to four out of uh, that. Dustin Makovitz is still the CEO. Inside ownership, three out of three. Glassdoor ratings, four to four. Mission statement, I'll say three out of three. Five-year performance versus the market is a zero. That's not this company's fault, really. That's more the market conditions. Are they doing anything to be shareholder friendly? No. Are they consistently beating expectations? Four out of four. 
Hey, seven. it's above 70. Investable. Before Pretty we account for the bad stuff, and I know at least one bad thing is coming. Uh, accounting regularities, no. Customer concentration, no. Industry disruption, no. Outside forces, no. Big market loser, no. Binary event, no. Extreme dilution, oh yes. Extreme, extreme uh, dilution. I, I, this should be a minus six, but it's just going to be a minus four. Uh, growth by acquisition, nope. Complicated financials, nope. Antitrust concerns, nope. Headquarter risk, currency risk. Uh, I mean, maybe a currency little, risk? little bit of currency, 40% outside the U.S. Yeah, my number is 50. So for consistency, I'll keep it there. But I would say borderline investable, right on the, on the not strong feelings either way. At this stage, I would want a mouthwatering valuation for me to be interested. So I'm going to say for now, it's a pass for me, but your turn. All right. So I definitely am going to give them full credit for their mission statement. I think it's excellent. And I, I have no doubt that they mean it. I believe that they mean it. All right. So for the moat, I am going to give them a half point for the internal network effect. That's the just a quarter of what you can earn. But I am going to give them definitely full credit for the switching costs because I believe those are very real. I don't see anything else. I don't see a low cost advantage, counter positioning or intangibles. So two and a half. Now for optionality, this is Brian, this is a really tough one for me because the company didn't really talk about different solutions, right? Mm -hmm. They talk about the work graph in general. So I'm going to give them a point and a half if you can make that possible because I believe that there is optionality and I don't believe that there's enough clarity for me to understand that optionality. Okay. Okay. This is, the wild hardest, card. this is the hardest one for me, Brian, because when I do this, am I evaluating the company based on what's on the balance sheet or am I evaluating the company based on what's on the balance sheet plus what's in Dustin Moskovitz's bank account? Because- those are two very different things, right? I would take a full point off, no doubt, if this was just based on the company's balance sheet. Okay. I'm going to take a half point off because I have no doubt that Dustin Moskovitz will not let this sink. Okay. Now, if he dies, all bets are off. Okay. Is any part of your thinking there influenced by the dilution? No. Okay. Um, but I, I, I totally understand that that is real. Um, but, but yes, that, okay. that's where it is. Concentration, I'm not worried about. And then plus one for Glassdoor, founder and ownership. So you get a score that it doesn't make me terribly excited. Um, I'm not like jumping with joy. The things that could change that, definitely changing financials. That would bring it up to 10 points. And then... Um, Kind of more clarity on the moat and the optionality would help. Um, it does make me interested because there are not that many companies that I believe you'll see being run the way that Asana is run. And that is that is very interesting to me. But I'm willing to put it in my thumbs up scorecard. Okay. So we are going to go over to our portfolios in stock card if we go to our portfolios. So this is going to go in Brian's anti-fragile portfolio, his thumbs up. Uh, portfolio, and we're going to buy it for that. So the ticker is ASAN, and we're going to do a buy decision. Today's date is September 14th. This is a $25 stock. Uh, so we're going to buy 40? 40. Oh, you put there you go. 40. And yep. the and score got, was 8.5. Yep. Um, this is going to be another good one that, like, uh, I'm going to put it in my thumbs down portfolio, yep. but just barely, just, yep. just barely. And my thumbs down portfolio is down uh, 40%. Which is a good thing. Yes, that's exactly right. These are the ones that I, I, I passed on. Um, it would be much better if my thumbs up portfolio was in the green and my thumbs down was in the red, but that's just not the state of the world uh, that's happening right now. Ooh, I'm getting it at a higher price Whoa. than you are. Um, good, Thanks I'll take that three cents. So for me, it was a, a 60, uh, 68, but teetering, very much teetering. If they got stock-based compensation uh, under control, if they got um, those, if they got that under control, uh, that would help uh, meaningfully. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any uh, any uh, comments that here to see? Uh, well, just both Brett and Matthew appreciate we we appreciate your comments and for joining us. Um, this is a, Brian. This is a, a stock that I am very interested in because I feel like if I invested in the company, I would be investing alongside uh, alongside someone who takes a similar approach that I do, which is seems like Moskovitz cares about where this company is in 2040. He's not too concerned about where it is 
in 2023 or 2024. Right. So I would say, uh, I agree with you. I think he's thinking long-term. I think he is more than willing to stomach enormous losses. He has a big appetite uh, for that. I saw they had a path to profitability. We didn't get uh, details on that, at least in the documents that we saw. I have a feeling if we dug to the transcript, it would be within the next two years, maybe yeah. three years. But this company has a lot of proving to do before it got there. But given the lower than average score and the likelihood for long losses for a long period of time, this would be a stock that I would want personally significantly cheaper before I took a hard look at it. And one one quick note, I would tend to believe that Yahoo Finance number of the higher um, of the higher valuation because yeah, what what I'm assuming is that the lower valuation didn't uh, factor in that three the 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 twenty million dollar extra shares. Yes. So and what so was the total number? I, is it two ten? Yeah, it was two ten times twenty five, five point three billion. All right. So what that means is, is that their price to sales is even higher. Their price yeah. to gross profit is even higher. Right. Um, because it hasn't, just so everyone understands that this company now has 10% more shares outstanding because Dustin Moskovitz did um, uh, a $300 million investment. So that increased the share count by 10%. So that increases the market cap by, by 10%. Exactly. There you go. All right. Well, we hope that you found that to be uh, useful and entertaining. This will be a fun one to follow and check in on. Uh, if you guys want us to do earnings reports on this one, just give this thumb, this video uh, the thumbs up and we will add it to our earnings uh, review. But we're going to keep in, uh, uh, continue to watch it from afar and hope this company continues to make uh, 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 progress. A uh, side note, we have a uh, financial, our course starts next Monday. Uh, and this Monday, when, uh, this Friday, September 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Brian and I are doing a, a one hour uh, free accounting lesson where we're going to teach people how to dig through the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. If you're interested in that, uh, see the comment, the pinned comment uh, below to, to sign up. See, uh, see you next time, Brian. See you next time. Brian's out.